We're going to show you some of the features of our circle track analyzer, version 3.5. Here you can see we're at the main screen. And what we're going to do is, like what most of you are going to do, is you're going to try and create your car. And then once you create your car, you're going to start modifying and see what things would have certain effects. So to create a car, what you do is you either click on File, probably open an example from us, and since you have a late model, probably makes the most sense to pull out the late model example we've got. A little preview is shown here when you click on different things. Click on the legends or the midget. And preview is shown here. We're going to click on late model. See the preview to the right and click on open. Here we are at the main screen. Now this is not obviously your late model. This is just some specs for a late model we um, simulated at some time. Uh, what you can do then is like... Calculate lap times. You can see this particular setup for this one gives you a lap time of 1954 and an average mile an hour of 92.1 miles an hour on this particular track with this particular car. Well, let's start making this look more like your car. One thing we can do is running conditions. This is a track. And let's say your track is different. You're not real sure what it is, but you know it's not a half mile. You say they call it a quarter mile with medium banks, let's say. And there we show you, well, we're going to call a quarter mile with medium banks as 1,320 feet infield width, which is pretty important, pretty hard to measure. Well, you can measure it, but pretty hard to know if you haven't measured the track. That's what the distance across the infield from this side up to this side, across the infield. And we're saying medium banks on this track is uh, 15 degrees. And you can see we're saying the straights are about 220 feet long. So let's say this is close to uh, what your track is, since you're not really sure. And as you can see, we really shortened up the lap time, but before we were on a half mile track, now we're on a quarter mile track. And maybe let's say you even want to graph some of this stuff out. Let's see what kind of graph we get. We're set up for doing, it looks like, engine RPM up here. And let's include the previous run, which is the last run. And you can see, yeah, we're a lot lower RPM because we're only on a quarter mile track. When you're on a half mile track, that engine can rev up a lot more. We're only getting up here to about um, 6,700 RPM, where before, on a half mile, this engine was running up to 8,400 RPM almost. But anyway, that's just information that you can look at for when you try and diagnose what you're doing here, making these changes. So now we got this late model, not yours, and we know that we're not right on the um, the lap times, the gearing, all sorts of things, because we haven't started modifying this stuff to match your car. For example, if we clicked on vehicle, we'd see over here that um, rear axle ratio is 5.5. Well, you're running a, a higher number than that. You're planning 6.1 because you're on a quarter mile track. And a lot of these things you may not know for sure, but some of them you do know. Uh, like center of gravity height, wheelbase, that's that's what yours is. Drag coefficient, you're not sure what that is. You can read up on that later. But some of the things you do know is, first off, your vehicle weight is 3,000 pounds. Change that. Here you got your corner weights and stuff. Uh, you know that doesn't quite match your car. But uh, you don't know the percentages, but you do know the corner weights. So you click on the corner weights, and it tells you here to change the corner weights. Click on one of these calc buttons. So here we have it. Now you can type in your corner weights. Okay. Your left front, so let's say, is 800. Right front is actually that comes up a little over 3,000 pounds, 3,030. But these are your corner weights. So yep, by typing in the corner weights, the percentages are showing up here, except this is correct. Now you got to do this with the driver in the car, because that affects the, the corner weights. Mm -hmm. So do you want to use this and change the total vehicle weight? Yep. So now we've done that to match your car. And let's go over here and change the circumference on the rear which is where this is important. 
for Stagger. And you're running 82 on the left. Let's say you're only running 84 on the right. So the changing tire size can also change some other things like corner weights and stuff. But we, we know that these corner weights match it for this uh, Stagger. Tread width, um, traction factor, you're not sure what that is. So let's just leave that. But we made some changes here. Um, let's see how this affects our lap times. Big thing we change is the gear rate. Oh, we'll get to this in a second. Calculate lap times. And what did we do? Well, our improvement was actually bad. We made things worse. Maybe because we changed the corner weights and stuff. But let's see what happened to uh, engine RPM. But now we are revving higher. We're more in the usable range for that engine. We're getting up to 7,400 RPM. And I say user, usable range for this engine, we don't know. Because this engine is left over from the uh, previous, uh, from that example. Now one thing that works real well for um, getting you close fairly quickly, especially for things you're not sure of here, is matching lap times. Let's say we went through and we set up the front suspension specs and everything to more match your car. You did all your measurements, your rear suspension specs, your engine. The thing is most people don't have a dyno curve, so it's pretty hard to know, but you know that you're not 355, you're 383 cubic inches. But you're not sure of this other stuff because you don't have a dyno curve. Well, there's certain things you can do. You can load in a curve from our engine analyzer, should you happen to have our engine analyzer uh, program, or you can calculate it from other specs. You can calculate a power curve from other specs. We're not going to do that just now. But what we're going to do is we're going to use this other feature here called um, match lap times. And what that's going to do is you're going to tell it some things about how your, say, how your car runs out on this particular track. Let's say that the lowest RPM in the turns is 47 and you rev up to 7,200, let's say. And let's say you're getting a... You're running a little slower than this car was running. It's about 13 seconds. And since you don't know much about the power curve or the engine, no dyno runs or anything, you're going to say, yep, I'm going to let you program adjust the power curve. And we're going to pick out some uh, some typical, you're running a 352 barrel. That's what the rules require. And you have to run stock heads. Okay. So knowing that, the program is now going to try and adjust specs to come up with some other adjustments that better match what uh, your car is actually doing. And what did it do here? It said with the old, what the previous uh, vehicle was set up, it had 444 foot-pounds of torque and 487 horsepower. But with these restricted stock heads and a 352 barrel, it's only got 203 horsepower now and 350 foot-pounds. And the engine peaks at 6,300. And what else did it do here? It um, it left the vehicle or the track specs alone. It uh, changed the uh, tire traction factor. And basically just lowered the power quite a bit is what it did. And then uh, bumped up the tire traction factor. And you can see here now we set it up from 72, from 4,700 up to 7,200. And it said best we can do with this is revving from 44 to 6,500. And we obtained a 12.9 second lap time. We so, said, well, that's a lot closer. Let's keep those specs. Now, this would probably make more sense if we went through and made more modifications to match exactly what's going on. But I don't have a lot of time in this demo to show it. And let's see what happens from this change by using these new specs. There you can see that lap time of 12.96, which you know slowed it down, which you said you were running slower than this uh, car originally was from the example. And if we click on the graph, let's look at our engine RPM. Yep, it changed it a lot. It's not going through nearly the RPM swing it was before because you told it that it doesn't, that this engine does not go through that severe an RPM change as uh, it does here for going from 4,000 up to 7,400 or so. So you can see it is matching. It did slow it down, which matches your car better. We'll get back to here, uh, the results. This is running a little slow because we're uh, recording 
when you had this, uh, when you, we were, if we were not recording the demo, you'd see much faster switching between screens. But let's say this is actually matching your car a lot better. So what you do now is you want to save these results. You want to save this to a, to a, a file of your choosing. So you have uh, call it you know, maybe some kind of file that makes sense to you. And I'm also going to change the comments down here because these comments were for the uh, late model example and don't match your car because we're no longer on a half mile track and such. So I'm going to erase that by highlighting it. And if you're not familiar with Windows, what you do to highlight something is you you just click and drag the mouse either backwards like it did there or you can start at the front and drag it this way and highlight everything. Press either the backspace or delete key and now you can type in something that makes sense for you for this car. Could be something like Jeff. Let's say it's at Hamilton. That's the name of the track you guys run at and it's medium bank crap. So you change those comments. What you do now is you click on file and save as in Windows save as means you're going to save something to a new name and let's change the name here. Also it's no longer 355 cubic units, it's a 383. So let's make some changes here to this name. And you don't necessarily have to use a late model or the cubic inches. You can use this. You can call it whatever you want. You could call the car Jesse, whatever. It doesn't matter. Click on OK. And now we've saved. Uh, we've started to create your car uh, with your actual name of your choosing. And here, if we open up something from your saved vehicles, you can see there's your car now. So you could go back. Let's say cancel out of this. We could open up a new example. Maybe you want to try something different. Look at this Mustang four-cylinder, for example. Here you see up here, Mustang four-cylinder is the name of the file you work with. Calculate lap times. This thing's you know quite a bit slower, but it could be a different track. Uh, could be on who knows what right now. We're back out of this. Open. And you can pull out Jeff's car anytime. Here you can see Jeff's comments right here. 233 horsepower and all that. We open this up and now we're back to running just late model again. This concludes the demo.